It's so simple that it's hard. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus gathers for a meal with his closest friends on the night before his crucifixion, and he shows them what love looks like. And he has done this many times before, in his teaching, in his healing. Jesus' whole life, his every word, his every action, is an embodiment of God's love. That is the power of the incarnation, of the word made flesh. Jesus is what love looks like. And on this last night, before love will lead Jesus to the cross, he once again shows the disciples what loving as God loves looks like. The teacher washing the feet of the disciples, the master assuming the role of a slave. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. It turns out that loving one another is not so simple. Loving one another as Jesus loves is about all of the hard things. Humility, vulnerability, sacrifice of position and power and comfort and control. Not to mention that to love one another means that we have to dwell together. We have to be in community, living with one another up close. And have you met some of us? It's not simple. We are not called to love one another from a distance, even as we have done that and been called to do that in ways we couldn't have expected over this time. But to be in community, to be really in community, we have to want love one another up close. And that's why this commandment is really, really hard. So we have to leave that illusion of simplicity We just love one another as God loves. We have to leave that illusion of simplicity behind. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote of the joys and burdens of living in Christian community in his work, Life Together. This book reflects the period in Bonhoeffer's life spent leading an underground seminary at Finkenwalde in Nazi Germany. There was very little that was simple in the two years that the seminary was opened from 1935 to 1937. The community was under constant surveillance from the Gestapo and was ultimately shut down. Bonhoeffer's reflections, however, are not focused on the hard realities that existed outside of the community. They're focused on the hard realities that existed within the community, the day-to-day challenges of living with and up close to one another and loving as Jesus loves. Here is what Bonhoeffer knew or what he discovered in that experience. He knew that followers of Jesus are called to live in community Community is distinctive and foundational to our life in faith. One of Jesus' first actions in ministry is to call the disciples. We see it in all four of the Gospels, one of those very few places where we have a similar story in all four. Jesus calls the disciples. He creates community. It's one of his very first actions. And so community is a given for followers of Jesus. It's a given and it's a gift. Bonhoeffer also knew that Christian community is not created by us. Jesus called the disciples. The disciples did not see Jesus and form a committee to decide to leave their boats and their nets. They were called. Community starts with being called. It starts with God. The disciples came together because Jesus called them. It is God who creates community. 
We can more intentionally live into it, and we should, but the beginning of community, like the beginning of everything, is God. We love one another because God has brought us together, and our fellowship is always in and through Christ. Which means here is what else Bonhoeffer knew. Living in community challenges our desire for control. These are Bonhoeffer's words. God did not make this person as I would have made them. We can all relate to this. Yes, God did not make this person as I would have made them. But then Bonhoeffer continues, God does not will that I should fashion the other person in my own image. Loving one another is not about control. Loving like Jesus is not about creating others in our own image. Bonhoeffer goes on to say, God did not give her, my friend, this person that I'm in community with, did not give her to me as a sister for me to dominate and control, but in order that I might find above her the creator. End of quote. We are, each of us, made in God's image and so must honor the mark of God, the image of God in each other. Even, or perhaps especially, on the days when we have compiled a list of notes to let God know how God could have done a bit better. We have to let that go. Because we have all of these images, these ideas of how life together might look. In our homes, in our places of work, in our churches, in our communities, we have these images of ourselves, of others, of how we give, respond, and receive love in community. And most of us are idealists when it comes to those images. In our hearts, in our minds, we, we want to leave the messiness aside. We want to put the messiness aside. We have wishes and dreams, and Bonhoeffer says that we must shatter those illusions. We must let go of our own idealism, of our own vision, so that we can live into a divine reality which is so much greater. In our story today from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that Peter puts it this way, Who was I? that I could hinder God. Who was I that I could hinder God? In that story from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter shares a glimpse of that divine reality of community, of community that is expansive in ways that our human hearts and minds can't even imagine. The Gentiles, of all people, have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, just as the disciples were at Pentecost. And more than this, Peter has accepted hospitality and shared a table and a meal with these new believers. This is not the vision of community that the leaders in Jerusalem have had. It's, in fact, not the vision or ideal of community that Peter has had. The com community and the identity of it in Jerusalem has been defined by, among other things, food laws. We are the people who do not eat four-footed animals, birds of, or beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. And then there's that question that Peter keeps close to his heart. Who was I that I could hinder God? We are the people who do not eat these things. And we are the people who have been called to love as Jesus loves. Peter chooses to trust that to follow the spirit and to hold his own vision of the community loosely enough that there is room for God to make the vision larger. It's not simple stuff. 
Identity and tradition are wrapped up in what it means for Peter to go to the home of Gentiles and not make a distinction between them and us. Peter sees in these believers the image of God and does not try to force his own image and the image of the community of which he has been a part on them. Peter recognizes that God has brought this community together, that God has called the Gentiles just as God called Peter. And Peter will continue to struggle with that, just as the other disciples will, just as we do, because life together is always a struggle. But as Bonhoeffer reminds us, we have to let go of our own images and ideals of community. The consequences of holding on are too great. It's the failure to have the hard conversations and to value pride and security over humility and risk. This kind of idealism, the kind of holding on to those images in our minds and in our hearts, they build and they build until ultimately they destroy And the body of Christ splits again, it schisms again, not so that it can be expanded or shared more widely, because that's our experience when we come to the altar, right? For Eucharist, the body of Christ is broken so that it can be shared. It's an image of abundance. But when we hold so tight to what our ideas of community and each other are, then it's a different kind of thing. It's an idealism that splits the body and destroys community, preferring the scarcity of our human visions to the expansive vision of God and of Jesus' love. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus commands this on the night before he dies after washing the feet of all who are present with him, of Judas, who will betray him, and of Peter, who will deny him. No easy buttons to this kind of love. Not at all simple. It's why on this fifth Sunday of Easter, almost at the end of these 50 days, we go back to this night, to these words, to the story that we just heard in Holy Week, to remind ourselves that this is what the resurrection life is, to love one another as Jesus loves and has loved and continues to love. So we hear them again today. And God is still equipping and empowering us to live in this way. The Spirit is still moving and inviting us to love as Jesus loves, to look for the image of God in unexpected places and people, to be a, a part of God's expansive community. At a meeting between Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and Pope Francis, a meeting that we should name that until recent times is not unlike Peter dining with the Gentiles to have the leader of the Roman church and the leader of the Anglican church come together in anything that looks like community. The Pope shared these words. We all have a problem, and that is that our hearts tend to shrink, become smaller, and close. We can't solve that problem by ourselves. Only the Holy Spirit can solve it. Come Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit might enlarge and widen our hearts. And to that we can all say, Amen.